Hello, I'm Deborah Malone, founder of The Internationalist and host of Internationalist Marketing TV. Today's guest is Melissa Fifield, head of corporate social responsibility and sustainability at Bank of the West. Melissa, what a pleasure to be connected with you. I, I, I hate to even see what a pleasure to see, say what a pleasure to see you because we, <laughs> we live in this virtual world now, but I'm delighted that you're here and I'm delighted we're talking about this. Well, it is a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Deborah, for having me. Great, great, great. Well, listen, before we delve in to your new Money Matters report, would you just give us a little background on the Bank of the West and its commitment to sustainable financing? I'm very proud to say that last year we were delighted to cite your 1% for the Planet launch as part of our Marketing Makes a World of Difference initiative. So yeah, please, please give us some background. Sure, sure. So, you know, at Bank of the West, we know that money deposited in a bank has the power to finance positive change putting your money into an institution that's aligned with your um, values is one of the most impactful actions you can take as a customer as, or as a business. Where you put your money really matters. And for us, you know, we have really um, tried to distinguish ourselves. We are a fundamentally different bank. We, we do that through really three things. We have uh, the strongest environmental stance of any major U.S. bank because of our policies, our programs, and our partnerships. We have uh, some of the most restrictive financing policies among other banking institutions. We restrict the financing of things that are the most harmful to people on the planet, things like drilling in the Arctic, fracking, coal, uh, even big tobacco. We have products for consumers, such as our 1% for the Planet checking account, um, that allows customers to see the carbon impact of their everyday purchases. Um, and we've got partnerships with some of the most incredible nonprofit organizations that are really on the front lines of helping to address, um, address some of the environmental challenges we face, be it the Conservation Alliance and the protection of open spaces, open spaces rather, the Sustainable Ocean Alliance, Sustainable Surf, uh, these are some of the incredible partners um, that we have helping to do a lot of that great work. Well, no, it's very interesting that you say that, and I, I can't wait to get into the report itself, but I, we are seeing so much more in, in these changing times with corporations partnering with nonprofits yeah. and so on. And I, I think that, I hope that we can get to a little bit more of that because I know that was what the 1% for the planet was all about. But we are here really to talk about something that I find quite fascinating. And yeah. um, you've recently published a Money Matters report called Revealing the Sustainability Intentions Gap. Now, now the title is immediately fascinating. Um, could you talk about or give us an overview about the sustainability intentions gap? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. The sustainability intention gap is really this delta between what people say they are passionate about and what's important to them, and then the behaviors or actions that they are taking in support of those values. And I think what we found was um, that people both business leaders and consumers alike are passionate about climate change. They want to take action. They want to be part of the solution. Yet what the research also found is that what many people don't realize, they don't make the connection between um, those values and where their money is and what their money is doing or undoing as it relates to those values. 42% of business executives and 77% of consumers don't know what their bank is or isn't financing with their deposits. And that's an incredibly powerful element in the fight against climate change is understanding uh, where finance is being directed or um, you know, moved away from the things that will either accelerate solutions or um, drive us sort of further into this crisis. Well, it's interesting because I, I, I think in everything, we always find an element of good news and an element of bad news. Um, and, it, <laughs> and it sounds like the good news is that from what I understand from the study is that 
79%, so that means almost four out of five people in the US say that they are passionate about climate change. But you, you did talk about the delta in behavior. And I, I'm guessing that the opportunity is to act on that passion um, so that it's automatic and a part of someone's lifestyle. I mean, you certainly talked about banks and banking and, and certainly money is very emotional. Um, but you know, are, are, there other, are there other things that came out of the study that, that suggested actions? Yeah, that's right. 79% of people who responded to this survey said that they're passionate about reducing the impact of climate change. Yet 23% of those don't know what their bank finance is or that their bank uses their deposits to finance things at all. Um, so I think that's really building that awareness is super important because you can't bridge the intention gap without drawing the connections, you know, without building the awareness and then drawing the connections to what action actually looks like. And so I think once people understand the role that their money in a bank plays, you know, in, in supporting the things that they say are important to them, I think then they're inspired hopefully to ask questions and to better understand what their financial institution, what their bank um, is doing with their deposits, and if necessary, make a change to an organization that is, is more closely aligned. So it could be, that could be one way. Um, the study also goes certainly beyond banking into mm -hmm. a number of categories of brands. Um, and there's some that consumers certainly support certain brands or, or certain categories of products. Right for environmental reasons. Um, I, I took a look at the ranking and I, I'd love you to talk about it because so often maybe it's because of the debate or, or thoughts about the prices of gas or versus electric cars and so on. I would have thought that something like vehicles would have been higher on the list, although I know that is a big ticket item. But talk yeah. about some of the categories of brands, and people's relationship with them in, in, in terms of this, this uh, perception gap or, or at least this action gap. Yeah, I think importantly, 82% of Americans said that they purchase goods and services from companies, from brands uh, who are aligned with social and environmental issues that they're passionate about. But what we found was that that most closely correlates with what people put in or on their bodies. So things like organic produce, you know, uh, food, uh, beauty, um, beauty items, not necessarily other categories of things, um, air travel, banking and financial services, um, hotel and leisure, vehicles that you mentioned, only 26% of folks sort of made that connection between um, sustainable brands or a, a sustainable company um, and their purchase decisions. So I think it comes back to this awareness level of understanding the role that each of these things plays in our lives and where we can maybe make smarter choices. Yeah, and it also seems from what you said um, very cleverly, what goes in or on our bodies, um, certainly the personal stuff matters. Right. And I think that when we, when we, I guess, move to things like you said, like air travel, um, although of course there's a personal nature to that, you, you don't take that as personally as something that, that you might be eating. So I think that that's quite, exactly. that's quite interesting that, that there would be that, that kind of gap, um, which is, yeah, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say, it's a little bit more abstract, right? You can't put your hands on it. You can't touch it. You don't feel it. You don't feel yourself wearing an organic cotton t-shirt or putting that lotion on your skin um, or eating that organic blueberry. Um, you know, air travel, things like that are a little bit more abstract. But I think it's similar with financial services, right? What people don't, and it's the same in all of these categories, the multiplier effect of that individual action and contributing toward um, you know, people say, well, I'm just one person. I can't make a difference with my own individual behavior. But actually, it's the same with all of these things, right? 87% um, of people believe that an individual, you know, that individual actions matter. Maybe they feel like they're small, but that they matter. Um, yet 66% of them would stay with their bank, even if they learned that the bank was financing things that are contributing toward climate change. 
And so I think that's really, again, back to this intention gap and the awareness of, of how um, their resources, how their money, how their deposits are being used to help or detract from these goals. No, oh, it, it is it is interesting. Um, I think, though, that there's probably also something quite demonstrative about the generations here. Um, we've been talking a lot about the value of purpose led companies. Mm. Um, but I, I think we all know that one of the definitions of of Generation Z is is that they are tremendously passionate about climate action in some way or, or finding a way to do something about it. Um, what other insights did you uncover, whether it was from Generation Z or, or the other groupings of generations? Yeah, I mean, I think Gen Z, as you said, definitely leading the charge when it comes to um, addressing climate change over older generations. Uh, and a majority that our research found would switch to a more climate friendly bank when they're made aware of, of the impact. Three and five Gen Z survey respondents said they would switch um, if they knew their bank was financing fracking, for example. Um, but I think it's still, you know, the, the fundamental fact remains that 88% say that they're passionate about climate change. Yet again, that intention gap of then, so what do you do about it? And what role does my bank or my you know, other financial institutions with which I might have a relationship, what do they have to do with it? And what are those connection points? So that's what we're really hoping the, the study helps to illustrate is actions that are fairly straightforward, but have a multiplier effect in terms of impact. Or perhaps making people think that that um, individuals are not necessarily playing a small role but that right. individuals can play a, a larger role through their um, affinity um, for certain um, institutions with, with stated values, or at, exactly least, right. um, at, at least feeling that they, they can um, use the power of the individual, or maybe in this case, if you talk financial institutions, the power of the purse to be able to yes. you know, make incremental change. Yes. Um, I, I think that, that that leads me to something that might be a little bit more philosophical, um, maybe um, maybe even more philosophical than 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 the, the survey itself. But we're certainly, it seems, living in a time when the responsibilities of brands are shifting to certainly meet higher levels of consumer expectations whether those expectations are about climate or, or whether those expectations are about customer service. I mean, it's, it's, it's a time of, of higher expectations. Based on what the Bank of the West is doing with, with let's call it sustainable financing, do you think we're entering perhaps a new era of business sustainability or at least maybe more sustainable business models. I mean, I know you're in California, which is usually, <laughs> as they say, the tip of the spear, and, and also seeing a lot of environmental impact at the same time. But do you think that this is the, the general direction that we're going, that brands are going with their responsibilities now? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the report helps demonstrate that. I think that trend started again with companies that produce products that people can feel and touch and um, food that they're eating and clothes that they're wearing. But I think it is absolutely a trend we're going to continue to see grow. Conscious consumerism, um, you know, is really becoming a mindset that's affecting everything consumers do with their money, not just what they purchase, but also services um, such as, you know, financial services. Um, and I think customers and business leaders have different expectations, as you said, with the brands and the companies with whom they're doing business um, than maybe they did in the past. I think maybe it has historically been more of a transactional relationship. And now it's a much more dynamic relationship um, for a variety of reasons, social media, you know, just expectations about the world we're living in, et cetera. Um, and in fact, some additional research that we have done has actually shown that ESG generally is actually the number one driver 
of, um, or important factor rather, even, even over customer service and price when consumers are looking for a bank. So that's the first time ever that that factor has been, you know, singled out as, as more important than these other obviously very important factors as well. So I think that's an encouraging sign um, that this is a trend that's here to stay. So it also sounds like that this has to affect uh, the role of marketing in all of this as well, because it sounds like if, if there is this much conscious consumerism, then somehow consumers have to get the message Absolutely. that, that they're, that the service that the products and the services they use are adhering to their values. And, and mm -hmm. that's not always an easy thing to do because as, as, as we certainly know, just sometimes shouting at people about it <laughs> maybe not be, may not be as convincing as, as doing something about it and, and letting people understand what those actions are. Yeah, I think it's the it's a, a healthy balance between the shouting to be heard, <laughs> but also it being part of your ethos and a genuine part of the value proposition that you have for your consumers and the trust that you have as a brand with your consumers. So I think it's all it's all connected. It's connected to quality value, um, you know, and again, this this idea that your purchases, your relationships with companies have an impact on social and environmental issues. They are not transactional, they are not in a silo, and they're not devoid with, you know, devoid of consequences. Oh, that, that's an interesting point. I, I, I love the fact not devoid of, of consequences. It suddenly means that consumers, brands may have a lot of responsibility, but it seems that consumers do too, to make, to make some pretty intelligent choices, or at least choices in line with, with what matters most to them, or at least, you know, have an awareness that they can make those choices now. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, be, because you know this this money matters report this study was was a big initiative for the bank of the west and i'm curious what do you hope the results of the study will achieve well fundamentally i hope the results of the study help to continue to drive awareness of this connection between something that most of us don't think about every day, which is our checking account or our savings accounts with our bank and really driving awareness that no, no, where your money is sleeping at night matters to you or it should, it should matter to you because it goes out into the world. That money doesn't just sit in the bank. It goes out into the world and finances things. It can be financing things that you want to see more of and that you know help contribute to a thriving, inclusive society or it could be financing things that are continuing to pollute the planet, continuing to drive us deeper into a climate crisis, um, et cetera. So yes, I absolutely agree that as consumers, we have a responsibility to make informed choices. I think brands, banks, other companies also have a responsibility to make that information clear to their customers um, and to help um, provide the information and be transparent about it so that we're better empowered to make those decisions. Oh, that's very well said. Um, and if I can, and if you can divulge it, um, what's next? What's next for Bank of the West? Well, I think this is, this is, you know, we're on a journey, right? We've got lots of work to do. I think the results of this study indicate that we've got a lot of work to do and in terms of continuing to drive awareness. So, um, we're going to continue to have these conversations with, with everyone that we can. Uh, and then I think more, um, as I mentioned, sort of the three pillars, we've got strong policies. So continuing to evaluate our policies and making sure that they are as strong as possible. Um, continuing to evaluate and build strong relationships with partners who are uh, doing some incredible work. Uh, you know, how do we help support them financially and, and through the talent of our teams? Um, and looking at products and services that we can, you know, that our customers want and need, helping to address, um, to address those needs in the marketplace. So more, more to come. Um, 
but we're super excited to be on this journey. It's an important journey um, and just really appreciate you taking the time um, to have this conversation. Well, it, it, it's indeed a pleasure. It, it is an important conversation. And um, I hope you keep us posted um, about the, uh, the next steps on that journey. And uh, congratulations for the work that you're doing now. Thank you so much, Deborah. Absolutely. The Internationalist focuses on the continual reinvention of marketing by highlighting inspirational marketers around the world and their ideas as they move the industry forward. Internationalist Marketing TV shares these perspectives through interviews and personal stories.